Welcome to a tutorial on navigation in Flutter. This is going to use the Navigator 1 and methods that you're probably familiar with like push named um, and pop. So there is a new navigator which is like the Navigator 2. Uh, I haven't actually learned how to use that yet. It looks kind of weird honestly but uh, this is all about the Navigator 1. So what we're going to do is set up our material app with on generate root and on unknown root and the goal of this is to get it such that we can have our navigation strongly typed, right? So I want to go to a method that's like my screen, and I want it to take in an integer if the screen needs an integer. I don't want to have to remember to put dynamic arguments and get the right type when I'm navigating around. Um, so I'm going to show you how I've set that up. So I got this class here called app router, and in it, everything is static. So let's look at how this is set up. So we have the app router, and this is where I'm putting all of my root names, and splash is just the forward slash. And this is a, uh, a method called onGenerateRoot, and this is ultimately a root factory. A root factory is a type def that Material gives us for what um, onGenerateRoot needs. So every single time a root gets pushed, uh, this is going to get called. And then that root is going to have settings. And in the settings, there is going to be a name, or at least there is if we give it a name. Um, so inside of here, I have a switch statement for all of my four roots here. So we're gonna go over four different examples. The simplest one being just going to um, a screen or exiting the splash screen, but the later examples have arguments and then one of them actually returns a value. So inside of here, uh, you just need to have a case for every single uh, root that you have. This can get quite long later. Uh, you could split this into multiple files if you wanted, but with only four here, I thought it fit just fine here. Um, so what you gotta do is this just, you know, on your, case here, you got to return a material page root. That's what a root dynamic really is. And it actually can return null. So if you forget to register a root, uh, this is just going to return null. So we just got to make a material page root, give it a builder, which is basically going to return us the screen widget that we actually want to make, and then just pass along those settings so that the name is there. So you can see I've done that for all of my four roots here, uh, the splash and the screen root are both uh, pretty much the same. And then here's an example of one with arguments. So in here, we have settings.arguments. And in root settings, the arguments is just a nullable object and it's optional. So one of the annoying things with Navigator 1 is that when you go push named uh, and you give it that root name, the arguments is optional and it's also an object. So what that means is there's this cognitive load on the developer to remember what the screen that we're going to needs as arguments. And I don't like that. I would like my compiler to just be able to tell me uh, this screen, this root needs an integer and it needs, you know, just one argument. Um, so I'm going to show you with the extensions lower down in the file how I've done that. But in here, this is still a dynamic, this is the actual root settings arguments and we do a cast here. So if we make a developer error and this is the wrong type, this is going to throw an exception. So we're going to have to make sure that our uh, extensions down lower are written properly so that it's the right type. Here, this is the editor root. So if you have a page or a dialog or a bottom sheet that return a value, um, like an editor screen, uh, that value you can put as the generic type of your material page root and you have to remember to make it nullable. If the user cancels the operation, um, this is going to return null. Um, so yeah, but either way, uh, same thing, we just return our editor screen and pass along those settings. So that's on generate root. We can also do on unknown root. So if we go to main, on unknown root, just goes in the material app as well. And when um, you hit an unknown root, uh, it's not registered with your normal uh, roots there. And it can be helpful, helpful for developing just to remind you if you forgot to register something properly or you forgot to, if you're missing a case. Um, I have it set up so that it just shows me a scaffold of the text and it says root settings dot name is uh, not found. Okay, so here's the meat of this. This is what makes our navigator strongly typed. So what I've got set up here is an extension on navigator state. So when you go navigator dot of context, that gives you a navigator state. So if we make extensions on that class, what we can do is put our own methods there. And when we write our own methods, we can control the inputs to those methods and make them strongly typed. Not only that, we can do some fancier stuff with the roots below and do things like removing roots when you navigate around. So here's an example. Uh, this is exit splash screen, and all it does is push named to the screen root, which is like the home screen, basically. 
right? But uh, on Android, what users can do is let's look at this button here, enter the app, calls this method. And you enter the app and Android users have a back button and by default, if there's roots below your current roots, scaffolds and app bars are gonna put a back button here. So if this is truly a splash screen, you don't intend your users to ever go back into that route, right? Um, you, once your app is set up, you're done doing your splash screen work, you go into your app and then when you hit backwards, Android users expect that app to be closed and iOS users would not expect to have a back button here and go back into the, you know, no one would expect to go back into the splash screen. So I'll show you how to do that here. So this is a method called exit splash screen properly. And what it does is it removes the entire navigation stack below the current route uh, that you're pushing. So when we press this button now, there is no roots below this one. So the app bar knows that there's nothing to go back to and it automatically does not put that back button. Not only that, if I press this button, what happens is we actually close the whole app on Android. So Android users also cannot go back into your splash screen. So the way that I've done that is just using a different method called push named and remove until. So by using push named and remove until, we can give a function which evaluates at some point to uh, returning true. And when it returns true, that is when you stop removing roots. So if we never return true, uh, this will actually just remove every single root. And this can be really useful for when you like leave a section of the app and you get to like a home screen and you say, okay, this is now like, I want my home screen to be the root of all navigation. You cannot go backwards from the home screen to the login page without logging out or something like that. Uh, doing something like this is great for that. So here we have the to my screen and this is the same as the splash screen. So on to the next example, this one has arguments. So when you make a method here, on the navigator state as an extension, you can make your own inputs and then we can feed those into arguments. And what that means is that when you call this method that is strongly typed to an int and it's much, much easier to work with. So when we're going to my screen with arguments in the future, we don't need to remember to add arguments because it's not gonna compile if we don't put anything. And we don't need to remember the type. We also don't need to remember how many arguments because the compiler is gonna tell us and it's gonna make it a lot easier to use and you're gonna like have a lot less accidental developer errors where you pass the wrong type or nothing at all because arguments is again, just an object. Okay, the next one here is the uh, extension to go to the editor screen. So uh, when you want to get a value out of a root, um, the value is gonna be a future of T and that T has to have a question mark because if the user cancels the operation or the Android user presses back button, what's going to happen is that you're gonna get null returned, um, a future null. So um, this is true for all navigation, by the way, whether it's a dialog, bottom sheet, or screen, whenever you push something onto the navigator, uh, material navigator, and then you go navigator.pop and you don't put a value or the Android user presses back, you're gonna get null out of that route. So that's the, um, the editor route. So let's look at how this works in our buttons. So we've seen main and now we're into my screen here. So my screen is this file. And inside of this screen, there's almost nothing. It's just this column of buttons, which is the same in every file. So let's look at how those work. Okay, so um, the first button to my screen with arguments, right? When we go navigator.ofContext and we import our extensions, what we're gonna have access to is our strongly typed methods on our navigator state. And remember this method takes an int. So when we pass in an int and go to this screen, we can see that my screen with arguments needs an int ID and it throws it in the app bar for us. So that looks great. And now that this is the root of navigation and I go forwards again, I automatically get this back button. See in my app bar, I'm not doing anything to get that. That's just for free with the framework. It's really nice. Okay, so let's close that off. So to my screen is actually just kind of circular. We're already on my screen. So we'll just skip that one. Let's go to the editor screen. So when we're going to our editor screen, the method that we wrote returns us a future value with a nullable string. So when we await this, that is going to wait for the user to do whatever they do on that screen until they come backwards. And then we're going to get a value. And this value is a nullable string because we've used the await value, uh, await keyword to get that value out of there. So if it's not null, that's they typed in something. And if it is null, then they canceled the operation and went back or whatever. So let's see what that looks like. So we go to the editor screen. There was just a um, text field. Let's open that up. So it's just a simple text field. It's got a controller. 
And then when they press OK, we go navigator.pop context and we return that value there. If we go back through any other means, it's just going to pop without a value, meaning it's going to be null. So let's look at both. So in my debug console, I got those print statements going. What the heck is that? We go back, we can say the user canceled the operation, no value was returned. Let's go to the editor screen and go type in something, hit OK. The user typed in a bunch of A's. So that's working great. Um, so I like this a lot for two reasons. First off, again, the call, the inputs to this function are strongly typed and the number of arguments that's going to cause compile errors if you screw it up. That's great. The other thing is that the return value is strongly typed, right? The editor screen can only ever return you a nullable string, not anything else. So you don't have to make assumptions about the type either. And the last one I can show you is just the unknown root. So if we go push named and put in something that we didn't do, um, that's going to trigger that unknown root stuff and it just gives me a scaffold with this text. Uh, when you do a production app, maybe you'd actually want to get rid of this or throw an exception or something like that instead of showing your users invalid root or whatever. But uh, for development, this is quite nice because it's just a little reminder that if you forget to register a root, then you got to add a new constant here and then make sure you handle it in your switch statement. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial about strongly typing your navigator. I really like these navigator extensions. I've been using this in every app that I've been making lately.